Welcome back everybody, I'm Kalani Das, music therapist, and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you uh, some strategies for using this hand pan, this particular hand pan, the ukulele, shakers, to reach breathing goals, relaxation, fine motor skills, motor planning, cognitive orientation, all kinds of really great goals that I do in my work as a music therapist, but that you can tune into whether, no matter what you're doing in music, it doesn't have to be in music therapy. So I'm going to explain everything and I'm going to share all this with you as this drum resonates and we hear it in the background. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty excited about this. So today I brought this hand pan to my session and it's a little bit of a smaller hand pan. I will leave a link down below in the description, but I've done a review on this on the channel. So if you're at World Drum Club, go to the World Drum Club YouTube channel and you can find a review on this instrument. So I'm not talking too much about it other than we're just going to look at how I organized it to play two different chords and what I did with that. I had my clients playing the handpan today. And this is part of their therapy, their music therapy, their physical recovery, working on planning, fine motor skills, all kinds of things. And I did have them play it with mallets, some soft mallets. So even though it's a handpan and we usually play it with our hands, Today I did have them uh, using mallets because it's easier and they get more success and it actually protects the instrument a little bit as well. So let's look at the hand pan first, then I'll talk about what's happening harmonically, and then I'm going to talk about what I did with breathing because we had, for example, a gentleman came in, he was a little agitated, he wasn't feeling well, had a little bit of a headache, so I decided to do something around deep breathing and also music that's kind of calming, not too stimulating. Uh, hence the music that you just heard. And this was all on on the, you know, kind of in the spur of the moment. Uh, so let's go to the overhead and I'll explain to you what's happening here. So this particular hand pan is generally in a D minor tuning. The ding is G, the low note, I'm mean, sorry, is a D. I might misspeak during this video. If I do, I'll just try to correct myself. Um, is a D. And then what I did is I found the D minor chord notes, which are conveniently located on this right side. And, and these are octaves, so we ended up just playing these three. For the D minor chord. And then I'm contrasting that or alternating that with an A minor chord, which in, you know, D minor would be the five chord, and that happens to be here, right? These three, this is the, the A, which is shared between the two chords. So right away, one of the things I like about this is I've got, I can just say right and left, right? Right side, and the left side. Now it almost worked out perfectly, but this note, I think is a, yeah, that's a G, that's not in the chord. So I put a piece of tape on it. I actually asked one of the assistants, the other therapists in the session, if they had any tape. And I got painter's tape. It's not going to damage the instrument. And this tape means don't play this, right? <laughs> don't play the note. Just a reminder. But what I did is I had the clients learn from me. I showed them. I actually had them practice uh, play, um, doing some hand movements while I played. So let's listen to that. So I was playing, just playing along. And then I had them raise their hand, uh, in this case, the left side. And then I had them do right side. And I said, just, you know, do anything you want. Right, 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 and then left. And I was cueing them, and I was also counting up to eight, because this is an eight-beat phrase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. Uh, left, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. Right, two, so a little bit of that. And then I also had them vocalizing, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, 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 uh,
leave a little space for breathing. So I'm cueing breathing, counting, waving, right, left. Okay, we'll stop this for a second. Okay, so that was the kind of setup. And I'm, I'm tightening this up, you know, as in my description for you. It took a little more time to get into all of this stuff. But then I passed off the handpan to one of the participants. It wasn't a huge group. It was about six people in the group, five or six people. And I showed him how to do it. And I said, here's the mallets. You can hold them like this. And uh, just played gently. And I made sure he, he knew what to do. And I suggested, I just said right and left. I mean, I didn't limit him to how to do it. You could, you could say, just use your right hand for these and your left hand for these. And this is the shared one. So you can, you can choose. I guess this is a D. Yeah, this is a D right here. So D minor, A minor. So it actually is not a pure A minor chord. It's just a like a hybrid, like an A minor with a fourth in it. But um, here's what it sounds like with the ukulele, and it, it works really well. D minor, and then A minor. Anything you want. All right, and then, and then we did, and that's that's all. Excuse me, that's all they had to do is just go back and forth, um, and they're playing the handpan, and of course they're not, you know, following exactly. But I just give them some prompts and some cues, and say right and left, and five, six, seven, eight, counting, and you know, had everybody try to keep track of that and do it. And that was challenge number one. I mean, it's physical. There's a lot of cognition involved in that. There's some sequencing, some motor planning, some mental planning. It's counting. Look, playing music is not that easy for anybody, especially people who might be recovering from a brain injury or having certain challenges uh, with their cognition. So what I did with the, uh, with the shaker, and I, first of all, I'm just going to play you this. And then I'm going to tell you why I did this. So here, here's the whole track. This is three parts. This is handpan, ukulele, and, and the shaker. Here we go. So left and then right. Why would I do that? There's a couple reasons. One, it's musical. It's a musical cue. So people, if they even if they couldn't count or they couldn't feel the eight beats, they could hear the shaker. So when everybody has a shaker in their right hand, it also gives them something fun to do. So instead of just waving their hands, they have a shaker hand and a free hand. And the shaker is a is a cue. So if they're not sure, they're not, you know, they're not following properly they hear the shaker oh yeah and they can see people playing the shaker so it becomes an auditory cue it becomes a physical cue it also becomes something physical for them to do and then be more involved in the sound of the music making and that is great all of that activity also led to a wider contrast between the two chords the d minor and the a minor 
which ended up being pretty cool because I was able to use that and push more into the creative aspects of music making with them. And I, so you can't hear it in the looper because the looper is just the loop thing. But when we were all playing, um, I pushed them to do more and kind of played more, a little more aggressively. So when we got to the D minor, I would be playing like... do something like a movement for the D minor dig in and then they do something really floaty and gentle for the A minor and I'm thinking you know this is all planning it's timing it's uh, motor uh, fine motor skills and then gross motor skills because I had them stand up and do their own movements for both of those kind of feels you know both of those moods and then I had them lead uh, so they're leading the group and they can do any movements they want. And some of the participants were really being very creative, which is awesome. Some, you know, weren't as, you know, they didn't, they didn't take the opportunity and run with it as much. And that's fine. Uh, but everybody had an opportunity to lead some dance steps, some movements. And I also could prompt them at that point too, and say, as I often do, I like to say, can you make that bigger? Can you do more of that? Can you, can you do that and move, uh, unstick your feet, unglue your feet? Cause as adults, often our feet are somehow glued, magnetized down to the ground. We forget that we can move them, <laughs> even if we're doing a lot of upper body stuff. So, uh, I, get, I don't want to tell people what to do, but sometimes I'll give people a prompt, like let's do that around the room or let's do that, you know, turn it into a dance or let's do that. And, um, go for a trip uh, during that time. And it's just fun for them to have more creative freedom and be more involved and lead each other and follow each other and connect with each other. And in that way, I could kind of fade into the background a little bit and just be there providing uh, the music and the structure. Um, and then I, if I had another set of hands, I could have gone to, you know, play the cajon. Um, and, you know, we didn't necessarily need the ukulele at that point, so maybe go to Cajon, use voices, whatever. Uh, and this whole time, we're also breathing and singing uh, in addition to doing all these things. So, it, you know, over time, and I would say this, this went for 20 minutes from start to finish. Over time, they're doing a lot. They're sharing, they're creating, they're breathing, they're, they're kind of warming up to sing, and we end up singing uh, a song which I'm going to demonstrate for you really quick, and I'm going to break it down for you uh, at patreon.com slash Kalani for patrons if you're interested in learning it. But um, so many good things came out of this, and this is a pretty simple setup, you guys. I mean, D minor, A minor on the ukulele, really easy. Hand pan, just right side, left side. It can't get much easier than that. <laughs> You know, so it was very satisfying for them. People love to play the hand pan. Uh, you, of course, you could play it with your, with your hands. But if you're going to use mallets, use some little mallets. These are very soft. Um, and I just reminded people to play gently. And that also is an opportunity to exercise control, motor skills and development so that everything isn't just heavy handed. Um, which is a useful skill. You need, you need to have that sensibility and level of control for skills for daily living, tasks for daily living. Uh, so this all relates to recovery, therapy, um, and we're using music and we're involving our clients. It is a nice sound. Uh, it's not manipulative. It's not gimmicky. You know, this is just music, music making and movement and creative movement and leading, and following, and turn-taking, and counting, and uh, feeling the music, breathing, singing, all, doing all kinds of things in a way that's accessible, that's musical, hopefully that's fun, and and also during the time, I'm checking in with people, I'm watching everybody, because I, I want it to be engaging, I want them to be interested, and I even ask them, are you guys doing all right, is this okay, you know, are you having fun, and they're like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> So I'll just straight up ask people, are you guys good? You know, should we keep doing this? Do you want to do more? Um, because I never want to 
you know, drag people through an activity that I, you know, just that I think of uh, that they're not into, you know, it has to be about them. Uh, but I, it was it was pretty successful. I was I was uh, really pleasantly surprised with that. So I just wanted to share it with you all. Uh, and that's my take as a music therapist. But certainly you can try these kind of things for yourself as a musician. Um, I recommend for any of you to uh, find the chords on the handpan, find the notes that you feel go together and that you can play, you know, two different chords or three chords, three chord areas. Uh, and that just takes exploration and experimentation and a little bit of remembering, you know, where these notes are. And if you need to, you could uh, do this or you could take a, a little Sharpie if it's your pan, take a Sharpie and mark the notes or get some colored dots and stick them on groupings of notes. Like you could stick, you know, say orange over here and red over here for a D minor and C and um, A minor. Well, A minor. Yeah, it could be any color. I like to use the chroma note system, so I'll probably do purple for A minor and orange for D minor, something like that. Anyway, you can come up with your own system. You don't have to use anyone else's. Um, so just to recap, hand pan, two chords, with the underlying goal of slow, steady breathing. Remember the breathing? Uh, cueing people, counting, breathing, playing, a little bit of training just on right and left ahead of time, and feeling the phrase and counting, and then uh, playing the, the hand pan one at a time, which is exciting for in individuals and then passing that around. And then the other people doing a shaker on their right hand, um, that also helps them really solidify, you know, which, which side are we doing right now, uh, gets them more involved. And then increasing the energy level of one of the chords and decreasing the energy level of the other chord, the alternating chord, so that we have differentiation. And then we use that uh, in movement and in singing. And, uh, when it was time to do the D chord, you know, the first chord, I'd say, okay, let's do it. Let me hear it. You know, I'll just say something like that. I didn't say sing louder. Uh, but I would say, what do you got? Let me hear it. You know, let's go. And then everybody would explode and, you know, and the action would, would be really big and then high contrast on the other side, bring it down. So pretty cool stuff. All right. Um, there's another simple song. So this is, we're going to wrap up. I just want to play, uh, for you and I'll, I'll play it for you really quick on the ukulele. This is a, a kirtan chant. It's part of it, part of a chant. I'll just play it for you right now. And then I'm going to show you, if you follow me over to Patreon, click the link below and I'll show you how to play that on the hand pan as well. But here's another song. And I, we did this today afterwards, after we did something else, we came back to it and I knew that they had already had these chords kind of in their ear. So uh, it was easy to use those chords for this because it's the same chords. Just played a little bit differently. Om Ganga Pati Namo Sorry. Namaste Om Ganga Pati Namo Namaste Om Ganga Pati Namo Namaste And then they repeat. So it's call and response. Let's try it. Om Gan Ganapate Namo Namaste. Om Gan Ganapate Namo Namaste. All right. Pretty fun. So follow me over to Patreon. Click the link below. I'll show you how to play that one on the hand pan, on this particular hand pan. I'll leave the link below if you like this video and you appreciate it. Give it the thumbs up, click it now, hit the bell so you don't miss any new uh, videos, get notified, and of course, subscribe to the channel. I'm Kalani, board-certified music therapist. I'll see you all in a future video. Thanks for watching.